Hello, boys and girls! Happy Sabbath! Happy Sabbath to you! Oh, it's another episode of Sabbath School. Yay. So we're glad that you tuned in and we're going to get started. But listen, uh, I want you to watch this thing all the way through. I want you to stick around all the way through for Sabbath School because at the very end, when Miss Julie and I are back, we have some news for you that's really exciting. Yes. And so we want to share it with you, but we're going to wait until after Sabbath school. All right? Okay, so uh, why don't we get started with a word of prayer? Yes. Okay, let's pray. Lord in heaven, thank you so much for your good love for us, your kindness to us. Thank you for the Sabbath day and for this chance to spend some time in Sabbath school. And we pray that you will teach us the important lessons that we need to learn today and help us to enjoy this time. And we thank you and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So what are we going to study today, Miss Julie? We have our memory verse. It's found in Proverbs 18, 24. Okay. You have it in your Bible here? I do. And I even close the Bible, but I think uh -oh. I can probably remember it and get there quick anyway. And this is the second half of the verse, okay? Proverbs 18, 24 says, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. But there is a, a friend, friend who, who sticks, sticks closer, closer than, than a brother. brother. Proverbs 18, 24. Hmm, a friend that sticks closer than the brother. Boys and girls, it's so important to have good friends. And what we do to help our friends is what Jesus' love does with us. And so today we're going to hear about some friends helping somebody who really needed a miracle oh. in their life. So we're going to hear another Jesus story, and I'm excited about that. So, the song we chose yeah. is actually also found in the Bible. It's found in Matthew, and I went and closed the Bible again. <laughs> so, anyway, I believe it was in Matthew 22, so I'm going <laughs> to flip over real quick-like. And the whole thing basically talks about, it's Matthew 22, verses 37 to 39, and here's what it says. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And the second is, love your neighbor as yourself. So Pastor Joe and I are going to sing a song that have these words in it and some extra words. And we won't sing it as fast as we normally do because it is a round song. And we're not going to do the round in order to not confuse you completely. But it's about those words. So, okay, Pastor Joe, All right. let's see if we can do it now. Okay, okay? let's see. We're going to do it right It goes here. like that. <clears throat> Two, three, and love, love the... the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and mind and love all mankind as you would love yourself and love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul and mind and love all mankind we've got Christian lives to live we've got Jesus love to give we've got Nothing to hide because in Him we all have life. Okay, oh, make sure good. you look up that verse. Okay, Matthew 28, 37. Okay? Okay, you guys. All right, well, it's time for a great Sabbath school. And remember to stick around afterwards. We're yes. going to tell you some great news, okay? All right, see you later. Okay, bye-bye. Hey guys, happy Sabbath. Here's a quick picture of who you're talking to. Hello, just wanted to say hi. I hope you can hear me okay. I'm gonna do a video here for you because this is a very special spot. And uh, I'm gonna put my mask on because I'm gonna be walking by some nice people that are close on the trail in a second. I'm taking you guys on a Sabbath walk today. Hold on here. This brook that we're looking at here is in the White Mountains of New Hampshire. New Hampshire is a small state way up in the corner of the United States, bordered by Vermont and Maine, and Amber and I have had a fantastic time traveling through it. But this brook is called Sabaday Brook. It's spelled S-A-B-B-A-D-A-Y. Sabaday. Does that sound familiar to any of you guys? Sabaday, maybe Sabbath. We'll try and clip in the placards that describe this brook to you. And we're gonna go and look at Sabaday Falls so that I can share the trail with other people. It may get noisy here, but this was named after the Sabbath. 
because the people who were working in this area, they took a break on the Sabbath day. Now for them, that was Sunday, and uh, that's not the theological discussion we're going to have right now. But they named it Sabbath Day Brook, and hence we have Sabbath Day Falls. And it's just beautiful. I'm just going to take you on a little walk here. We're going to be passing some nice people on the trail. This is a favorite here. Wow, isn't this gorgeous? Look down there at that water. There's the lower falls. Amber and I were just down on a little rock. It looks there is where that gentleman is at right now. A few minutes ago. And here's the upper falls. If you can hear me. Sabbath Day Falls. Named after the Sabbath. Sabbath Day Brook. Because many of the people work six days a week. And they work so hard that on the Sabbath, this is a great time for them to come and go berry picking have a nice rest along the river. These were hard-working people. Because back in the day when this was named and really the trail being formed and utilized, people were farmers, road makers, railroad workers. And it was a lot of hard work. They didn't have all the fancy tools and machines and electronics that we have today. So for them, when they took their day off once a week and rested, it was a big deal and they really needed that rest. So they enjoyed this spot, and that's where its name came from, Sabaday Falls and Sabaday Brook. I'm gonna go past these people here. Lots of people taking pictures. Oh, look at that falls there. Look at that beautiful gorge there, that all the water goes down through. And here we're just going to walk up these stairs, this last little bit, here in New Hampshire. Oh look, there's someone we might recognize. Hello, what's your name? Amber. Hi Amber. And here we are at the top of Sabaday Falls. That water's got a lot of coloring in it. It's called tannin. The tannin comes from the leaves. We were looking at waterfalls in another river earlier where it was really dark brown. But now that we're up here where it's quiet and I can remove my mask again, <laughs> since I'm away from people, I just want to remind you that even back in the 1700s, 1800s time period when people were first discovering this area, at least the people of European descent, probably back in the 1600s actually. The native people were enjoying this river. That it was recognized that the Sabbath was a day to take a break. It was a day to go and sit by beautiful water, enjoy the beauty of God's creation, and just take it all in. And here we are seeing the gorgeous fall colors of October and enjoying this beautiful crisp outdoor day here, this last plaque tells us a little bit about the path of Sabaday Falls and tells us a little bit about how the river carves things and how the falls turn sharply, maybe a little of the geology of the rocks that we have here. There's a really neat band of basalt right here. You can see that darker color rock is the basalt mixed in with the granite. It's a neat little stripe that we were just down looking at. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the little walk I shared with you on Sabbath Day Falls here in North New Hampshire. Happy Sabbath to you. Make sure you get outside. Take a break in nature. Look at the water. See what kind of bugs and creatures and animals you can find. The green and the leaves, the pine needles, the light and dark colors of our leaves as the chlorophyll exits the system of the trees and turns colors. 
and happy Sabbath to y'all. He's got the whole world in his hands. 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 He's got you and me, brother, in his hands. He's got you and me, sister. In his hands, he's got you and me, mama. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the wind and the rains. In his hands, he's got the wind and the rains. In his hands, he's got the wind and the rains. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the tiny little babies. In his hands, he's got the tiny little babies. In his hands, he's got the tiny little babies. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the puppies and the kitties. In his hands, he's got the puppies and the kitties. In his hands, he's got the puppies and the kitties. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the mamas and the daddies in his hands. He's got the grandpas and the grammys in his hands. He's got the uncles and the aunties in his hands. He's got the whole world 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 in his hands. As I was walking down, I decided maybe I should show you that basalt that I was talking about. This really cool stripe in the rock. Look down at that. So you see here, we have granite. Look how it's freckled and different looking. And then right here we have the stripe of basalt going right through the rock. Here's a little better view of it. Look at that stripe. And there's the bottom of Sabaday Falls. Pretty awesome how nature forms a stripe of basalt rock right in the middle of the granite. Boy, if it were only warmer, wouldn't it be nice to just jump right in there? They do have signs that say no swimming within 500 feet of this lower falls, which of course we would be in, but I look forward to heaven someday when we can just slide down a waterfall like that and ride through the water and right over this little falls at the bottom. All right, bye-bye, y'all.
Happy Sabbath, everyone. We're here with Paul and Renee about Park Ministries. Park Ministries. What is it? You go set up playgrounds in the park, go clean up trash in the park. What's Park Ministries? Ah, park Ministry is a, a ministry where twice a month the Wenatchee Church goes and feeds the homeless at the railroad park in Wenatchee. Yeah, we provide uh, a hot meal for that day, and we also um, give them a sack lunch that they can uh, take with them for later in the day. Um, it, uh, um, it's 3 o'clock, um, and they all know at 3 o'clock that there will be food there for them. So um, for us, it uh, starts about uh, what, 1.30 or so. We start uh, the process of uh, making lunches. Um, and um, sometimes we make 30 lunches, sometimes we make 60 lunches. It, uh, the numbers vary, um, and it, uh, it takes time. It takes time, so we have, um, we have helpers that uh, um, we work with. We certainly couldn't do it ourselves. Um, um, that uh, we put together the hot meal, um, as well as, as lunch. Um. So we've got, we do two weeks of the month, and the other Seventh-day Adventist churches in the Valley do the other week. So uh, Valley View and Abundant Life and Spanish Church, um, they all take turns um, serving lunch one week of the month. So the homeless really do know, plan on every yeah. Sabbath, Three that there'll be food there. That's exactly right. That's cool. Um, yeah. And that was started here in the Wenatchee Church about, gosh, I'm going to say 18, 19 years ago. It was yeah. right mm -hmm. after we moved here mm -hmm. that a woman named Gail got that started. And I think when it began, the Wenatchee Church did all of the weeks of the month. And then eventually they reached out and asked the other churches to join in with that ministry. So we still do two of those weeks. And generally, um, Paul and I and the team that we work with, we, um, with another family, we do the first, well, the first week, which is actually the second week of the month, and then there's another team of families here in the church that do the, the third week and the third um, the food and prepare and everything. So it works pretty well. What do you feed them? What do you make? Well, the first week we do um, a spaghetti meal. And um, and then the second week we do a burrito meal. And when we say meal, it's you know we have vegetables and we have salad and we have bread and then we have the spaghetti with the burrito. And so we try and have a well-rounded because not everybody likes to eat everything or can eat everything. So we like to have there's so there's a bit of variety there. And um, and then it's hot when we serve it. And then and then they can. How many people usually will show up? That for depends meal. on the season. Right now, because it's um, part of the season, we've been serving between 50 and 60 people. So is that more than normal? That yeah, normally, uh, or uh, and, and there really is no normal. It's kind of uh, interesting. We we are always guess. we're guessing, mm -hmm. and we kind of keep track of how many there were the week before, <laughs> um, and. So, um, well, I think even today we're talking about we'll prepare for 50, um, and we'll, we we would prefer to have too much food than, than not enough. Mm -hmm. um, but there have been sometimes that yeah we've gone through all the food, all the lunches, everything is <laughs> gone. Um, but it it really is it's a it's a challenge, um, and and even the timing. Sometimes when we show up at 3 o'clock ready to serve, there's a, already a line of people. Um, other times you start out with just a handful of people and then they just keep coming and coming and coming. Um, so uh, it's, 
It's interesting. We've we've uh, changed things a little bit with with the COVID. Um, we um, pretty much put everything on the plates and, and serve it to them. Um, so there's not much um, as far as passing things back and forth. It's pretty much eliminated that. Um, we always there's always water and, and things that we provide with the lunches to or with like the meal. Mm -hmm. So the lunches, um, besides the the peanut butter and jelly sandwich, um, we have we have two type of granola bars, a chewy one and a crunchy one. And an applesauce. Applesauce with a spoon. Um, we also have um, a juice, a container of juice in there. Um, I have a bag of chips. Water. What? Water. 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 Um, I don't know. Did we forget anything? And we put a glow track in there too. Oh, that's right. Just a word of encouragement. Right. Thank you, Carson, for helping us. But you were asking about numbers too. So mm -hmm. when it's winter and it's cold, our numbers get down to between 20 and 30. So we're, we're somewhere in that range. In the and, you know, you try, you keep in touch with whoever did it the week before, but it really is guesswork. You never know that Do you have a story of anybody who's really stood out that you've met, or are there people who come back every week that um, you kind of start to recognize or just a story of when you've done it that it kind of meant something it was special that day? I think probably this time of year we have more people that, that we don't recognize it, you know, that change. But there are, there are some, just some regulars, I guess you would yeah. say, that, you know, we've, we've done this for a few years now, and, and you know, they've, they've come every week, or most every week, and when they don't come, then we wonder how they are, and where they're at, and so we, then we can catch up with them when they come again the next week. So. That's cool. How do you keep the muse hard on a winter day? Oh, that's a really good question. Mm -hmm. We drive really fast. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Can't say that. Can't say that. Okay. We drive the speed limit. We absolutely do. Um, no, then we use um, heavy towels and we wrap because everything is pretty much in, you know, big kettles. And so then we wrap that dump, you know, with double layers of heavy towel and keep it warm. So it is still steaming when we get there. <laughs> really good question. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Why Park Ministries? Why do you do it? Well, I think it's important to uh, give back to the community to help people who don't have as much as we do. And it's a way to be a blessing to show them that we care about them and we love them. And it's good for kids to do that and kind of get some experience doing something to help someone else, too. Nice. What's your favorite part? Uh, probably ma um, making the lunches yeah. or, like, handing out the lunches to people just to... Yeah. Uh, yeah, people are very grateful, and it's nice to see the happiness we can bring to them with some good food. And they kind of like it, kind of a social thing. And I think it tells them that someone cares about them when they see us out there helping out as well. So what is the weirdest thing that's happened with Park Ministries when you've been doing it? Well, a long time ago, but we were feeding and um, quite a bit of people, and we were taking pictures, and one of the people said, don't take my picture, get that off the film, because he was hiding from his father who was a cartel leader and had sent people after to get him and if he didn't want to come back they would kill him and so he was hiding out and he was very jealous of another guy who got baptized because um, he didn't want to get baptized I don't know what his mind thought about that being seen somehow from many people but that was a really interesting strange experience you never know who you meet you never know uh, who you're serving. Okay, so why do you do this? Why Park Ministries? You know, it's, uh, it's a ministry that I, I feel is important. Um, and I think it's, it's very important for our community to, uh, um, 
to have this. And I guess I feel blessed that I've always had people. I've always um, had a place to stay and, um, you know, what I can do um, to help our community, those in our community. Um, I, I really enjoy doing it. I think it's a, um, it's a very worthwhile ministry that uh, our church provides. And I'm, I'm happy to be a part of it. Hallie, why do you do park ministries? What's the best part of it for you? Uh, well, I like to, I like helping people and knowing that I'm making a difference. And also sometimes there's lots of cookies, so that's always a part of it. Okay, what is a an experience um, from Park Ministries or something that sticks out in your mind? Well, one thing that sticks out in my mind at Park Ministry is, you know, feeding the hungry is always a very important thing to do and share what we have with other people that uh, have needs. And there was a man in our community uh, that had needs like that. His name was Wally Briggs. And uh, Wally Briggs... Uh, he used to be an alcoholic, drunk, lived behind a Greatland exhaust in South Wenatchee down there by Stan's Mary Mart in a cardboard box. And um, Wally uh, found the Lord through Park Ministry and the efforts of the Wenatchee Seventh-day Adventist Church. And um, he found a whole new life for himself where he would actually be uh, raking widows' lawns and helping out in the church a lot. And um, Wally, before he knew Christ, he was a professional bum. He would go and make up to $1,500 every weekend watching the Seattle, or bumming money from people watching the Seattle Mariners. He'd ride a flatbed rail car from Wenatchee to Seattle. He rode a flatbed rail car once when he was, uh, before Christ, when he was inebriated, from Brewster all the way over to Montana. And he lost his brand new boots. He lost his money. He went uh, ended up being into in, in the fall in this town in Montana, very very cold and without shoes and boots. Um, but while he led a wonderful life, once he found a little, once he found Jesus. Um, one of the neat things about Wally is that uh, he, as we were working with him to convert to Christianity, we have these Ten Commandments in our home, and Wally was looking at them and put his hands on them, and he goes, you know, I've broken every single one of these. If you see me around, ask me for more questions about Wally Briggs. Um, he was quite a character, and uh, the way that, that God turned his life around was amazing. story today out of one of my very favorite books. It's called Once Upon a Bible Time. The story we're going to read today is called Down Through the Roof. After a stormy night at sea, Peter brought his boat safely to land at Capernaum, Peter's town on Galilee. To Jesus and the disciple friends who had sailed with him, Peter said, come to my house, come home with me for rest and bread. Jesus and the disciples' friends were happy to go to Peter's house once more. They had been there many times before. Jesus liked Peter's house. He liked Peter's town. He called Peter's town his town. 
what a special thing to be said about where you live that Jesus would call it his town. That's pretty, that's pretty neat. Peter's house, like most houses in that day, had a roof as flat as a floor, tiled with squares of sun-baked clay. Steep stone stairs led to the roof on the outside. There was no door from the roof to the inside. The roof was a favorite place to rest by day, a favorite place to sleep by night. And always, day or night, the roof was Peter's favorite place to pray. If Peter had planned to take his friends up on the roof to rest or to pray, he didn't get to. Not that day. Why didn't he? It was because someone spied Jesus on his way to Peter's house, and that someone told another someone, and that other someone told someone else until almost everyone in the town of Capernaum was passing on the news. Jesus has come. Jesus has come. He is at Peter's house. Can you imagine? Everyone wanted to go to Peter's house now. Everyone, just everyone, rich people, poor people, well people, sick people, glad people, sad people, small people, tall people, hurried to Peter's house. Look at all the different types of people. A lot of guys with white beards, right? I see one little kid. Looks like a mama. Soon, many people crowded into the house. It was tightly packed inside. So many people crowded around the door that soon it was tightly packed outside. Not far from Peter's house, a man sick with palsy lay helpless on his grass rope bed. He couldn't move his arms. He couldn't move his legs. He had to be turned. He had to be fed. Hearing that Jesus was at Peter's house, he said to friends who had come to help him, Jesus made a blind man to see, a dumb man to talk. If only I could go to Jesus, he would heal me of my palsy and make me to walk. You see him pointing? Pointing to his friends, take me to see Jesus, take me. The sick man's friends were as certain as he that Jesus could and would heal his palsy. So they picked up his bed, two at the foot, two at the head, and carried him to Peter's house. But when they reached Peter's house, they found it not only tight packed inside, but also tight packed outside. And what's more, no one would step aside and allow them to enter the door. Everyone, everyone wanted to see Jesus. And they didn't want to make room for other people, did they? Maybe there's a door in Peter's roof, the sick man hopefully said. So up the steep stone stairs, the friends carried him on his grass rope bed, two at the foot, two at the head. When finally they stood on Peter's roof, the roof that was as flat as a floor, did they find a door? You already know. They found no door, no door. The friends looked at each other in dismay, looks that seemed to say, Now what do we do? What can we do? Said one, We might tear up some tiles of clay and make a hole in Peter's roof to let our friend's bed down through. Yes, yes, the others agreed. And the next day we'll come back and mend Peter's roof. Mend it with new tiles of sun-baked clay. Now, those are some good friends that be willing to bust through a roof. Let's see, let's get this page turned. Right, while one friend went for rope and the others tore up tile after tile, the sick man looked on with new hope, hope that he might walk again, maybe even that day. He had a lot of faith, didn't he? Lots of faith. When the hole was complete, two friends tied ropes to the sick man's bed, two ropes to the foot, two to the head, making sure their knots were both secure and neat. Then they eased their sick friend down through the roof that was as flat as a floor, down gently, gently down to the floor at Jesus' feet.
Jesus smiled at the man lying so helpless on his grass rope bed. Son, be of good cheer, he said, because of your faith and the faith of your friends. I say, arise, take up your bed and go your way. And the man who had lain there helpless jumped up as lively as a boy and waved his arms for joy, just for joy. He does look happy. Then he picked up his bed, as Jesus had said, and praising God, made his way toward the door. People shook their heads and whispered low, never before did we see it so, never, no, never before. What the man who had been healed did the next day, the Bible doesn't say. It gives no proof, but I am sure, aren't you, that he went with his friends to mend Peter's roof. I hope you guys liked it. I sure love that book. Have a happy Sabbath. Okay, well, that was a wonderful Sabbath school yes, lesson. Was. And you kind of gave us a hint about what that was going to be. And I sure didn't. enough, it was about, well, what was that? That was about uh, the, 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 the man who helped their friend down the roof. You heard the story. That's great. And that was a wonderful uh, gift that they give, gave him, wasn't it? To introduce him to Jesus and bring him to Jesus to help, to help him. Well, listen. We have some great news for you, and that is that Sabbath School is starting up again right yes, here at the church. Yes, it is. And it's starting next Sabbath, so we mm -hmm. hope that you can come. We don't know what your family's plans are, but we, we know that we're going to open all of the classes, mm -hmm. and we, we want you to come if you can, okay? And uh, the, the difference is that it's not going to start for many of you. It won't start at the time you're used to. Normally, Sabbath school starts at 945, but that's only going to be for the juniors and the youth and the, and the adult classes, but for cradle roll and kindergarten and what's primary. the other one? Primary. You're starting at 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock in your Sabbath school rooms, okay? And so we hope that you can come and it's going to end at 1030 or 1025 for the cradle roll and then 1030 for kindergarten. And Well, you just get here at 10 o'clock and you'll be fine. All right. Juniors at 945. All right. So we're so excited that we can work yeah, that out. And all, of, see you. and all of your teachers are excited. They, they've been working hard to make Sabbath school work out again. And so uh, we're, we, we still want you to wear your masks and have your parents wear your masks because that's still a, a rule in our state to do that. We want to protect each other and all of that, but we want you to come. It's going to be a good time. All right. Yes. So we hope you'll stick around. Uh, and I, I should say be here and stick around yeah. here at church next week. And what that means, Miss Julie, is that we're not going to have these videos going anymore. We might have some other ones we're working on that would not be a whole Sabbath school program, but might be something else. But we'll let you know about that mm -hmm. if it works out, okay? But uh, so we want you here because we don't want you to miss Sabbath school, all right? Okay, you guys. Well, I think we've had a good time. Can we close with prayer? Why don't we do that? And you know what? We want to thank Miss Christie for all her work that she's done. And she has brought in so many different speakers yeah. and songs. And it's just been a lovely time. From all around the world. Yes. Too. It's been awesome. So yeah. why don't we go ahead and pray? Okay. Father God, thank you again for your mercies, your grace, and for a chance, Lord, for us to worship together. And we are so thankful that we can come back to Sabbath school in person. What a wonderful thing. I want to thank you again for Miss Christy and all those who've contributed over the several months, the many months that we've had to have these videos. But Lord, it's been fun. So thank you so much. And help us to have happy hearts. And most importantly, may we love you with all our heart our soul, and our mind. Yes. We praise you today and thank you. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God okay. bless you guys. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain. Selves. Do nothing out of selfish ambition 
or vacancy. Rest